Mayor Huckabee Sanders. Good Welcome morning. back, uh, Madam Secretary. How are you? It's great. It's great right. to actually uh, be with you live in person. So it's sure. pretty exciting to uh, finally see the curvy couch. Right. And I know your, your dad's excited, too. He's about to launch a syndicated show. <laughs> he is. Uh, and you guys are fresh off the view together. <laughs> Has this been a surreal Huckabee experience for you over the last few weeks? Uh, I think it's been just a surreal experience in general. Absolutely. Um, it's been uh, a whirlwind of a few months, but it's been the honor and privilege of a lifetime to get to serve this president. We're in the administration, and uh, we've had a great first uh, nine months, and we've got a lot of work to do. One of the top, 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 top topics, easy for me to say right now, is <laughs> the hurricane, and that's one of the things you guys have been worried about, hurricane relief, and now it's bearing down on Puerto Rico. Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, a series, as you know, storms. Uh, the FEMA director, Brock Long, has been working uh, alongside all of the state and local officials, really trying to make sure that we put as many resources in place as possible. Thanks to technology, we have a lot more leeway uh, on the front end of a lot of these storms that are allowing us to preposition resources. The federal government is doing all that we can to help uh, people in both, you know, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and other surrounding islands as well as these storms are moving in. Meanwhile, a storm of the United Nations, uh, because they've been dealing with this problem for at least 20 years, and that is North Korea. Mm -hmm. But now, as uh, uh, General McMaster said, we've run out of road. There's no more road to kick the can down. So anybody who's president, 45th president, was going to have to be dealing with this. Now, this president yesterday is calling Kim Jong-un out. First, he said that the, uh, uh, he'll feel the, uh, the fury Trump. of a response. And yesterday, over the last couple of days, he's been using the term rocket man. Where did that come from? How did that resonate? What's the reaction been with Steve Miller and others who are writing the speeches? Uh, look, that's a, a President Trump original. As you know, he's a, a master in branding. But I, I think the bigger thing here, and one of the reasons I think you hit the nail on the head, this is a problem that we've been dealing with for 20 years. And Americans wanted somebody, a, a strong leader, somebody who wasn't going to put up with it anymore. That's one of the reasons I think Donald Trump won. They saw strength. They saw somebody who was not going to apologize for America, was not going to apologize for America's sovereignty in our success. They wanted somebody to stand up and be a fighter. They got that in Donald Trump. I think that was on full display yesterday in one of his stronger moments. And I think it was a great reminder of why people, you know, supported him and certainly why he's going to be a very successful The world president. leaders in the crowd he was talking to, they erupted in, into applause when he talked about being against the, the Iran nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. They also clapped when he had that moment when he talked about how he's going to stand up for America first and they should do the same. Listen to the soundbite and then we'll get your reaction. is to its people, to our citizens, to serve their needs, to ensure their safety, to preserve their rights, and to defend their values. As President of the United States, I will always put America first. Just like you, as the leaders of your countries, will always and should always put your countries first. Has that not been done in the past? Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, certainly, I don't think the previous administration was always putting America first. I think there was a lot of, uh, as I said, apologizing for our success. That's not something that America wants. That's not what our country was founded on. And um, certainly, I think you see that day in, day out by the support for this sure. president. Uh, Sarah, yesterday when the president was talking about the Iran deal and said it was a huge embarrassment, he said, I don't think you've heard the last of it, believe me. What does that mean? Well, I, you never want to get ahead of the president, so I'll let him make that announcement when the time comes. Uh, but I, he's not made this Wait a, a secret. What, what announcement would that be? Well, what, 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 by the 15th, what, right? what plans may change and, and what actions he's going to take to fix uh, the mistakes of being part of that deal on the front end? Look, this is a president who doesn't shy away from what he thinks. He's been very clear, very consistent that he does not like this right. deal, that it was bad for America, and something that he aimed to change once he got into office. But the the problem with getting out of this deal is it was front-loaded. They got all the cash and relief from all the sanctions. So Iran would actually probably be high-fiving uh, high each Ayatollah because they'd be like, look, we got the money, and now we're free to legally build these weapons. I don't, I don't think as long as uh, Donald Trump is president, Iran's going to be doing a lot of high-fiving. So I, I think that uh, well, they'll that's be speaking a pretty... Today. That's the pretty president sick. will be speaking today at the United Nations. Yeah, I'm we'll, sure he'll have a retort for that. 
I'm sure he will. Yes, a lot of people in the mainstream media didn't like the comment, the rocket man comment. That usually that means you're doing something right. If the mainstream media thinks it's bad, then it's probably, most Americans probably like it. What was your reaction to Senator Feinstein? Had some comments. Hillary Clinton was on with Stephen Colbert last night and had comments against the speech. She called the speech dark. Uh, look, I, I, everybody wants to talk about Donald Trump is escalating things. He isn't. North Korea is. But we have to have somebody who's going to stand up and say enough is enough. The president is doing that. He's going to protect Americans, protect our allies, and stand with our allies. And that's what um, he was elected to do, and that's what he's going to do every single day. Well, it doesn't look as if uh, in the U.S. Senate the health care reform is dead. There's a, they're referring to it as a Hail Mary, essentially. The Graham, uh, <laughs> it is football season, after it all. It is. The Graham <laughs> Cassidy bill. Uh, some are suggesting maybe there are 50 votes out there right now. Somebody who does not like it is uh, Jimmy Kimmel, and he used his program last night to essentially say that uh, Senator Cassidy had been on his show and lied to him. Uh, he's not going to provide for everybody in the country. Uh, look, I, I certainly respect the position that he's in as a parent. Um, he's speaking for the protection of his kid, as he should do. Uh, but at the same time, we have to have a program that actually works. And we know that that's not Obamacare. It's simply not sustainable. It's collapsing. There's many markets where they don't even have providers anymore. We've got to get a system in place that actually works for all Americans. This is a great step forward. I don't think there's ever anything wrong with putting more control and more power closer to the people that are going to be receiving that care. This allows states to have a lot more flexibility. Again, you're not using this one-size-fits-all approach. What works in California probably doesn't work in uh, South Dakota or Arkansas. And so allowing that flexibility state by state is certainly a good thing. It's certainly a conservative thing. And it's a, a great step in the right direction of repealing and replacing Obamacare, which we desperately need to do. Sarah, the AP is running with a bunch of photographs. With General Kelly, we could, can see on the outside the change in the White House it seems to be much more efficient running on military time. You know from the inside out, you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, just our perception. But he seems to be with the president all the time and seems to be either holding his head or showing his aspiration or staring in the ground. And people looking at those photos and saying he's unhappy with the president's remarks. You know General Kelly, you know the president. What's the dynamic there? Uh, General Kelly's been a great addition to the team. Uh, he and the president have a great chemistry. Mm -hmm. They're working really well together. Um, he's a great leader. I mean, you don't get to be a four-star general and not be a strong leader. Uh, the president has an uh, abundance of energy. I don't know where it comes from. All of us on the staff are tired trying to keep up with him. But it doesn't uh, I wouldn't mean, be surprised if that's part of speech. it. He doesn't mean he's upset by the no, speech? No, again, he's been part of the process. He's part of uh, the speech writing process and very engaged. So he read and the speech ahead of time. So any reaction, it might be because he's tired or he's just got his hand on his forehead <laughs> and the media wants to run with it. I, I, I would uh, certainly not read anything into uh, that picture any more than probably just like the rest of us. We're tired trying to keep up with this president who's working hard every day to uh, help America. Mercedes Schlapp going to help? I think so, yeah. She's a great addition to the team. We're very excited. Uh, look, anytime you can add more women to the team, I think we're going to be uh, very excited. And the press and comms office are all in women's hands. So uh, look out, guys. And she's got a lot of experience, too. <laughs> yeah, Thank she's you. great. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thanks Thank for you. stopping by. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right.